Hello everybody, uh, this is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I uh, have removed a couple of videos I recently made. Uh, one was uh, uh, No More Calvinism, Please. Uh, and the other one was uh, uh, permanently cancel the uh, uh, weekly talk show ready with an answer. Uh, I uh, have reconsidered uh, both of these questions. Uh, and the, the show ready with an answer, I, I will continue doing it. Um, perhaps next Sunday I can begin it again. Uh, I won't be doing it tomorrow. But um, the, the other question is, uh, uh, should we no longer talk about Calvinism? I, I, was, I made that video because of a particular uh, case at, at that time. Uh, uh, we, we had uh, a brother that was very close to us who decided that uh, he would move away from uh, the focus of our ministry uh, and instead put all of his attention into uh, uh, teaching Calvinism and, and made a great effort to try to persuade us all that we were wrong and that we Calvinism was correct. That's the true gospel. And I made the video uh, just basically directing it to him without mentioning his name and appealing to him to let's let's not talk about Calvinism anymore. It's only causing division. Uh, but he, he he would not give it up, and he persisted until finally uh, it did cause a division between him and, and uh, uh, many of many of us uh, who, who uh, love him. So uh, now he's closest YouTube channel. And uh, um, now I had to reconsider the, the question, should we talk about Calvinism or just ignore it? And over the last week, you know, I've, uh, I've been forced into this discussion, but it's also made me, uh, my disdain for Calvinism uh, has grown even greater. And so I, I do believe that it's something that we do need to continue talking about, continue uh, carrying on the fight against Calvinism. Because I do find it that, that horrible and sickening. Um, now, if, if you know me very well, uh, you know that I've, I've made a lot of videos uh, uh, discussing the problem of dogmatism in the church, and and I and I I try to personally keep my dogmatism at a minimum, and I've said that there's only a few things that uh, that I think that are so important that uh, I would break fellowship over. Um, these are uh, that Jesus Christ is eternal God Almighty the deity of Christ. If someone ever argues or teaches that Jesus is not eternal God Almighty, that he's a creature or merely a prophet or just a great example, that, then I would have to say, I, I can't, I can carry on a discussion with you to, to try to convince you, but I, I could never have fellowship with you. The same thing is also true if someone teaches that salvation uh, for mankind is uh, uh, acquired through personal merit. Uh, the truth is that salvation is a free gift from God uh, that's offered to every person, and we receive the gift of a salvation and eternal life simply by putting our faith completely in, completely in Jesus Christ for salvation. Uh, we must not put any faith in ourself. That the problem with the world as a whole is that almost everybody in the world is putting their faith in themselves for salvation. They, they believe that if they can 
uh, perform up to a certain level that they will satisfy God and uh, then they will go to heaven based upon personal merit or personal performance or works. Uh, but that's a false message, and the true message of salvation is that uh, uh, we, must, we must reject the fact that uh, we could get to heaven through our own performance and come to the conclusion that we need to put our faith in the performance of Jesus and that he did everything that was required for our salvation. He died for our sins on the cross, so therefore our sins are forgiven, and he offers eternal life to all of us, he raised himself from the dead to prove he has power over life and death. So he's offering us life now, life everlasting, if we put our faith in him. To so uh, we have the doctrine of the deity of Christ. We have the doctrine of salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Uh, and then there's the doctrine of eternal security. If, if someone teaches that uh, we could lose our salvation for any reason, uh, then, then I would have to br break fellowship with them. Uh, whether they say it's because uh, a person did not persevere until the end in good works, or they did not persevere until the end in their faith, then I would have to break fellowship with them because they do not believe in eternal security of the believer. Uh, another dogma that I have that's, uh, is just that uh, 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 tolerance for uh, other uh, theological questions. Apart from these things, if someone uh, uh, has a different view on eschatology or, or dispensationalism or uh, you know, Bible translations or many other things, uh, then, then we, we should be able to uh, carry on an ongoing discussion with patience uh, for uh, the other viewpoint and learn from each other and not divide over it. We should be able to tolerate other viewpoints on everything else apart from these core doctrines. There is one other reason I would break fellowship with someone, and that is just a personality conflict. Uh, I don't want us to associate with people that are just rude and offensive and abrasive people. So those are basically the, the five dogmas I have. The deity of Christ, faith alone in Christ alone for salvation, eternal security, tolerance for other opinions on other theological questions, and uh, just have a nice personality, someone that is pleasant to be around. So. How does Calvinism factor into this? Well, uh, I cannot tolerate a Calvinist. Uh, I cannot fellow fellowship with a Calvinist. Uh, if you watch my videos on Calvinism, you'll see that uh, Calvinism is, is uh, teaching a different God. The God of Calvinism is not the God of the Bible. The God of Calvinism is evil. So I could not have fellowship with anybody who believes in this evil God of Calvinism. I could also not fellowship with a Calvinist because of their, their view of uh, uh, perseverance of the saints, that if a person gets backslidden or loses their faith for any period of time, that that proves that they were never saved. No. We, we do not, uh, works uh, do not factor into uh, gaining salvation. Works do not factor into maintaining our salvation. And works do not factor into proving that we are truly saved. So for those reasons, uh, Calvinism violate these core beliefs of, of who God is and, and how we get saved. And I do think that Calvinism, uh, after looking at it even more closely over this last week, uh, my, my disdain for it has grown and grown. So I, I do think that uh, we need to carry on this fight against it. That's why I 
I removed my video saying, no more Calvinism, please. I, asked, I was asking at that time, let's stop talking about it because I wanted to try to calm the storm that was, was happening, the, the, uh, the division that was happening within our, our fellowship. But now I see no reason for us to restrain ourselves. Uh, so, yeah, I will be continuing to talk about Calvinism. And I hope uh, those of you who understand the problem with Calvinism will continue to, uh, to put that forth and argue against it. Uh, I want to thank uh, the brothers who uh, have been uh, trying to encourage me during this time. I feel like, in a way, over the last few days, I've been going through a period of mourning for the loss of a brother who decided that Calvinism was more important than than the fellowship and biblical Christianity. So, uh, I will be uh, doing more videos on this, and and we will continue doing our weekly talk show on Sundays, probably beginning uh, next week not tomorrow. So thank you and uh, bless you all and rest in the love and grace of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.